JBN keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones and in the news, woman found dead with a stab wound in Mobay. The Burnett Street Police in Montego Bay, St. James, have commenced a probe into the death of a woman who was discovered with a stab wound along a section of Jimmy Cliff Boulevard on Friday morning. The deceased, who is of a dark complexion, slim build, and about 5 feet 6 inches long, was clad in a white blouse and a multicolored skirt. It is reported that shortly after midnight, passers-by stumbled upon the woman who was discovered in a seated position beside a brick wall in the vicinity of a Burger King outlet along the boulevard. The police were summoned and upon arrival, it was discovered that she had what appeared to be a stab wound to her back. She was rushed to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where she was pronounced dead. A.K. Manslain in quadruple killing in Central Village, Justin McGregor, also called A.K. Man, who was wanted by the St. Catherine South Police Division, was among four men killed by unknown assailants in Chinatown, Central Village, St. Catherine on Friday morning. The other persons killed are Mark Ellis, also called Frassy T, and two other men who have so far only been identified by their aliases, Ottoman and Mento. Meanwhile, the police are asking Delcita Chin, also known as Three Ways, to report to the Central Village Police Station or the Major Investigation Division as soon as possible, as the police believe it can assist in the investigation. However, head of the police's Corporate Communications Unit, Senior Superintendent of Police Stephen Lindsay, told reporters that the investigators do not have any suspects at this time. Residents reported hearing explosions sometime after 3.30 Friday morning and checks in the area after 8 a.m., led to the discovery of the bodies of the men. SSP Lindsay said the police believe the men were killed as a result of an internal feud in the Jaggy Jaggy gang, whose leader returned to the community from prison last week Wednesday after being acquitted of charges. AK Mann had reportedly taken over leadership of the gang during his absence. The police are maintaining a strong presence in the area. Two JCF members in custody amid reports of abduction and attempted murder of lover. Two members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, are now in custody at the Grand Spain Police Lockup in St. Andrew after they reportedly abducted and attempted to murder a woman in a secluded area of downtown Kingston last Sunday. It's understood that the woman and one of the officers has been intimately involved since October 2021. According to reports, the complainant, a customer service representative, left her home on Saturday, July 22, about 8 p.m. to stay with a friend who she had planned a beach trip with in Portland for the following day. The report further states that her policeman boyfriend called her and asked her where she was. The complainant reportedly shared her location with the policeman, who then informed her that he was coming to see her to verify her story. The boyfriend was assigned to the Marine Division and was accompanied by his colleague, a district constable, drove a marked service vehicle to the location of the complainant. The boyfriend allegedly forced the complainant into the service vehicle and assaulted her all over her body before squeezing her neck. The complainant also reported that her boyfriend threatened her using the words, May I go kill you. The report says the men drove the woman to an undisclosed location in the downtown area where the boyfriend allegedly started to cover the complainant's mouth. She managed to jump from the service vehicle. She ran to the marine base and made a report. The two suspects were subsequently taken into custody pending further investigations. Tax operator charged for armed robbery in Old Harbor. A taxi operator was allegedly among men who committed an armed robbery in Old Harbor, St. Catherine, on July 1, has been charged. He is 37-year-old Jermaine Vassal, otherwise called Chicken, of Mexico, Maine, in Arnett Gardens, Kingston 12. He is charged with unauthorized possession of prohibited weapon, using a firearm to commit a felony, robbery with aggravation, assault of common law, and malicious destruction of property. The Corporate Communications Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force says reports are that about 11.30 p.m., a woman was about to close her business when she was allegedly accosted by a vassal and other men who were armed with guns. The men reportedly damaged several items inside the establishment and stole a Samsung cell phone, a quantity of assorted beverages, and $486,000. The police said intense investigations led to Vassal's arrest. It was charged after it was pointed out during an identification parade. St. Elizabeth man charged for allegedly shooting at police. 
A man was allegedly among a group that engaged the police in an armed confrontation in Spring Park District, St. Elizabeth, on July 8, has been charged. 30-year-old Santino Hibbert of Luana House in Skimming Black River, St. Elizabeth, is charged with unauthorized possession of prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition. The Black River police say about 10 p.m., a team on patrol in the area heard explosions and were confronted by hoodlums on a motorcycle when they responded. The men reportedly opened gunfire at the team, which returned fire. When the shooting subsided, Hibbert was seen with gunshot wounds. The police say a Taurus revolver with three cartridges was seized. His accomplice reportedly escaped on foot in the area. Hibbert was taken to hospital, where he was admitted for treatment under police guard. He was subsequently charged and is awaiting a date for court. Criminal case against Real Reed and Fritz Spinnock to go ahead following court ruling. Former Education Minister Real Reed and former Caribbean Maritime University President Fritz Spinnock were today dealt another blow after the full court refused the application to court Chief Parish Court Judge Chester Crooks' ruling that they have a case to answer in the multi million dollar fraud matter. The two had sought a judicial review of Crooks' February 2021 decision claiming that the judge should not have ruled in the matter as he had admitted to a conflict of interest. But Justice Crescenia Brown Beckford, in handing down the ruling this morning, said the court finds that the claimants have not satisfied the court on a balance of probabilities. The standard of proof used in civil law cases that the inferior tribunal was biased. Furthermore, she added that the court considers that the fair-minded and informed observer who is also sensible and rational would not, on his evidence of a scant acquaintance many years ago, reasonably apprehend that the learned chief parish court judge did not bring an impartial mind to bear on the adjudication of the case. Given this position, she also noted that the non-disclosure of the nature of the judge's knowledge of Reed was of no consequence. The judge was decided on the matter, along with Justices Lisa Palmer Hamilton and Trisha Hutchinson Shelley, said there was no evidence that they had any specific interaction or association when they were in school many years ago. Neither was there evidence of a personal or acrimonious relationship. The judge also indicated that the claimants had not objected prior to the hearing of the application. This, she said, could be construed as an unequivocal waiver of their rights to further information. At the same time, the judges found that there was a failure on Crooks' part in not providing full disclosure. But she said Crooks, by nature of his training, would have disabused his mind of any irrelevant personal beliefs or predispositions and set aside any unconscious bias. In the meantime, the judges lifted the stay of proceedings on the criminal aspect in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court while ordering that every effort should be made for the matter to be set for the earliest trial date. Reed's wife, Sharon, their daughter, Cheryl, and Jamaica Labour Party Councillor for the Brownstone Division, Kim Brown Lawrence, were also charged in the matter involving nearly $50 million, which was allegedly diverted from the CMU. Crooks' ruling was in response to a preliminary objection raised by Reed and Pinnock on the basis that the charges against them should be nullified, as the Financial Investigations Division FID, which leveled the charges, had no authority in law to arrest or charge them. The matter first went to judicial review and was heard before a single judge in February of this year, but another hearing was reordered after the court came to the realization that the matter should have been heard before a three-judge panel. The matter was subsequently heard on May 7 and 8. The lawyer for the Attorney General's Department in the first judicial review hearing had urged the judge to strike out the complainant's case, arguing that it was purely an academic exercise. The accused are facing a range of offenses, including breaches of the Corruption Prevention Act, conspiracy to defraud and misconduct in a public office or common law, and breaches of the Proceeds of Crime Act. Attorney at law Hugh Wildman and Luke Foote represented Reed and Pinnock. One dead fallen for a vehicle crash in St. Anne. One man is dead after sustaining injuries in a four vehicle collision on the Discovery Bay Main Road in St. Anne on Thursday. The deceased has been identified as 32 year old Donovan Thomas, a security guard of Middle Buxton in the parish. According to the police, the collision involved a white Toyota Corolla driven by Thomas, a silver Mitsubishi Pahero, a white Toyota Coaster, and a green Honda Civic motor car. Lawmen report that around 6.15 p.m., Thomas was traveling along the thoroughfare when he lost control of his vehicle and collided with the Toyota Coaster, which caused the other two vehicles to crash. Lawmen report that around 6.15 p.m., Thomas was traveling along the thoroughfare when he lost control of his vehicle 
and collided with the Toyota Coaster, which caused the other two vehicles to crash. The fire brigade and police were called to the scene, and upon their arrival, Thomas and the occupants of the other vehicles were taken to hospital. Thomas later succumbed. An alleged eyewitness of the incident happened due to the wet conditions of the road. You know, see, because the road wet door, and it's like the driver them couldn't respond when the vehicle them get out of control. Especially them road here when you hear about accidents every day. You can't be speeding, much less when the road wet, he said. He cautioned drivers to be very vigilant while traversing the St. James' Ascent and thoroughfare. But just want the people them know, say, they must take their time and drive on them road here. I know look a bit of dopey make out here, so you see the stretch and watch it on my base that trouble something may I tell you. It's sad still, he added. Police Federation Chairman Fans saw suit over his interdiction. Chairman of the Jamaica Police Federation, Corporal Ron James, was taken off duty on July 26, based on comments he made at a funeral on July 15, found a lawsuit in the Supreme Court, seeking to have the order for his interdiction quashed. Attorney Yo Wildman filed the claim today on behalf of James who is named in the court documents as the applicant. Assistant Commissioner of Police Andrew Lewis, who is in charge of administration in the Jamaica Constabulary Force, is named as a respondent. The Commissioner of Police has directed that disciplinary action be taken against James at a court of inquiry. Waltman says they are now trying to get a judge to hear the application today for an injunction to save the decision of the Commissioner. James is seeking an injunction pending the hearing and determination of his application for relief to apply for judicial review against the preferring of disciplinary charges against him. He stated in his affidavit that he is taking the intervention of the court to protect his right to express a genuine feeling and concern about the welfare of the members he was elected to represent. The applicant, therefore, seeks an order quashing the various disciplinary charges brought by the respondent against the applicant and its consequent reduction in salary and the interdiction of the applicant he has stated in the court document. He stated that he expressed himself in a respectful manner, but nonetheless forcefully, that the Federation was not prepared to sit by and allow the High Command to be complicit with the Executive in not carrying into effect a court order. The statement of the applicant was made consequent on a meeting held virtually on July 12 by a Deputy Commissioner in Charge of Administration, Richard Stewart, and Assistant Commissioner of Police, Andrew Lewis, with members of the Central Committee of the Police Federation, in which the High Command spoke of a possible cap on the overtime paid to be made to the rank and file members of the JCF, James outlined in the court document. The statement by the High Command in the meeting runs contrary to the clear order of the court, which made no such cap on overtime payment, the document stated. James contends in his claim that what he said at the funeral of Constable Damian Blair did not go beyond the bonds of proprietary and falls square within Section 133B of the Charter of Fundamental Rights and Freedoms, which guarantees the right to freedom of thought, conscience, and belief. He further stated that it was absolutely necessary at the funeral to communicate to members who were present that he and members of the Federation were not prepared to abandon the needs of its members in light of the Supreme Court ruling. The Commissioner ordered that James must be indicted, and in the public interest, James should cease to perform duties in keeping the police service regulations. James is to receive three quarters salary with immediate effect. He has also been directed to hand over all government properties. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.